that we're at both ends of the spectrum here. If you're too acid, you don't absorb them. But also, if you're too alkaline, you can't absorb them. And, okay, you'll note there that at a pH of 5.8 is where we begin to absorb calcium. So that if your body does not have a pH, meaning your urine and saliva does not have a pH of at least 5.8, you can't absorb calcium. And as we go on today, we'll let you figure out the significance of being able to absorb that calcium. But if I look at manganese, which you can absorb until you have a pH of 6.0. If you look at eggs and sperm, there's no egg or sperm that will develop, whether it's in a, a peach or whether it's in you, if you do not have sufficient quantities of manganese in the body. Well, you can't even absorb manganese until you have a pH of at least 6.0. So we wonder about the number of infertile young women and men we have out there try, anxiously trying to have children and having difficulty producing viable eggs and sperm. Many of them are too acidic and cannot absorb enough manganese to even produce sperm and eggs that would be viable. Then you add to that what we said earlier in terms of the frogs. If the frog eggs and sperm are bringing up mutations and defects, what do you think is going to happen to your sperm and your eggs if you're drinking the same water? You get an idea that um, water isn't just a casual little thing here that you, know, you can see through when you hold up a glass. There's got to be more to it than that. Okay, now, you say to me, Doc, when I look at these minerals here, what significance is that? So I can't absorb, I mean, above the, the sperm and the egg situation, or I can't absorb calcium. What, what else does it mean? We can go on to the next slide with the tube. If I cannot absorb my minerals, I like to, to put the minerals, uh, or make them tantamount to air in an inner tube. If I can't get enough air, if I can't get enough minerals to a particular organ, then I'm going to suddenly get this little outpouching on the side of the organ. Now, in a human body or in an animal, that would be tantamount to a cyst. You know, this little outpouch on the side of the inner tube. I keep going along. This lasts for, say, uh, a year. <clears throat> now I've got a permanent outpouching on the side of that inner tube, on the side of that organ. That would be tantamount to a tumor. And all of that is because I can't get sufficient minerals to those organs. You know, the one we can see, the biggest organ we got is our skin. So you start seeing cysts and things on your skin, imagine what the other organs look like. And each organ has a different percentage of minerals that it needs in order for it to grow or to be, you know, in peak performance. So let's say the brain says, well, I like a lot of calcium, and I like a little potassium, you know, and uh, let's see, throw in a little magnesium. That I need to just have my brain function. And if not, I'm going to begin to develop cysts in my brain. Or my thyroid, hey, it needs calcium, it needs potassium too. But it needs it in different percentages than my brain does. And every organ in the body has its own percentage there in terms of what it needs and whether or not these little outpouchings will begin. These cysts, these tumors will begin. Now, if this goes along long enough, or the mix has been strong enough, I might find that I can't get any air at all. I can't get any minerals at all to those organs. Hmm. That's when we call, it would be comparable to a flat tire. You know, that, that tire is not going to roll at all. That would be called, in energy circles, a delta cell. Another term for that would be a free radical. All that's 
when an organ cannot get the minerals that it needs and the energy given off of those, those minerals. You can take the next slide. The other term that we use for delta cell or free radical would be cancer cell. Now, how many of you have seen, um, if I add water to some metal or leave it outdoors for a while and it hasn't been appropriately coated, it begins to do what? It begins to rust, okay? Rust is the same as a free radical. It's the same as decay. It's the same as the word oxidation or oxidant. The metal is oxidizing just by adding water to it. It is not getting what it needs. Something has to counteract that. So for purposes today, we're going to look at rust on metal as you rusting on the inside or your organs decaying. Basically, again, why did that happen? Because we couldn't get the appropriate minerals to them. So then you say, okay, I'm beginning to put two and two together here, but um, how do I do that? And what prevents me from doing that? Well, if I think for a moment and had to pick an organ in the body that was the most important organ, can you guess what that organ might be besides the brain? We'll take the brain as number one. But what other organ do you think? Hmm? Heart's, heart's an important organ, but believe it or not, I could still have uh, cells going, even if the heart slows down. I mean, there are other ways to keep the chemical and the cells vibrating, okay? I think I heard it over here. Give me another guess. What other organ? Skin is the biggest organ we got, so it tells you what's going on in all those other organs because we can see it, okay? The liver. The liver is your workhorse. Everything, everything filters through the liver, okay? It, we tend to think, and um, if you could find that slide on the digestive, on the digestive tract behind spiny, we tend to look at the digestive tract I think a little erroneously. And one way that we look at it is we think that everything goes through your liver, through your pancreas, through your gallbladder, etc. Guys, the digestive tract is one long tube open on either end, here and the anus on the other end, okay? And so what starts here in your eating goes through this long tube, 30 feet of it, and comes out on the other end food going through. Now, in the process of going down that tube, different things are added in. And particularly in the stomach is the machine that breaks it down so that the juices from that can enter your bloodstream. And it's through the blood that things are taken to the liver. And from there, things are dispersed throughout the body. So that you can imagine, just for a moment, that the liver is the thing that's going to determine where everything gets distributed, including how much potassium do I have to send up to the thyroid? How much calcium do I have to send to the teeth? If not enough is coming to that liver, or if the liver is jammed with a lot of toxic material, then it can't do its job. So it'll be working, let's say, at 50% performance. So I can't manufacture and distribute everything that I need. I only can send 50% of it. That's when those organs begin to die. So if the liver is overloaded with toxins, it can't do its job. So I'm very interested in something that will affect the liver, that will allow it to be cleaned out if necessary, and will strengthen it so that it can do its job. Now, Dr. Kerry Reams I mentioned earlier in reference to the, the pH chart and the equation of life, and he's one of the few scientists in the world he lived about the time that uh, Einstein and Edison and all those beautiful physicists, he was also a biophysicist, where Einstein worked with E equals MC squared, Reams worked with MC squared equals E, or can I turn material into energy? And they respected each other. He tested 280,000 foodstuffs for the spin of their electron. And if you can imagine for a minute just the... That's the impact of that. 
if I have electrons all spinning in this direction, okay, and all of a sudden I have another one going in the opposite direction, where these things overlap, there's resistance. 